Last week, we built a new trail here on Berm Peak. It was a short one, starting at the top of Woodpecker and ending at a row of shrubs behind the garage. The trail is named Airbag, which seems appropriate for a run with an emergency stop at the end. But we're not quite finished with this trail. No, I think this could work, especially if we can kind of flatten a bit here. Eric traveled all the way from Utah to visit Berm Peak, and I'm having a great time showing him what we've built here. Eric has a mountain bike trail system in his yard too, although it would be more accurate to call it a slope style course. Only a few trees hide this course from his patio, the one tiny sliver of his backyard that isn't covered in jumps. And I have good reason to keep my yard looking normal too. I promised Mrs. Bike Hacks that all the trails, jumps, and features would stay in the woods behind the trees. Today's build will certainly push the boundaries of that agreement. Do you think we can take the level down more here? Yeah. Today, Eric is helping me design and build a huge jump, which will actually be hidden behind these bushes. Of course, that does put the trajectory of anyone riding this jump squarely on the lawn behind the garage, but I have a solution for that. For now, all we need to do is build the lip. A lip is a curved launch made from dirt, wood, metal, or anything really. Our lip will be six feet tall with a 10 and a half foot radius. That radius will make a transition from the ground to a certified bike cannon. To make sure we get that angle exactly right, I drew a guide which we can use later on with a level. This transition is just mellow enough to cut with a circular saw, which makes for a really smooth cut. But since we're using 2x12 lumber, we'll need to join a few pieces together in order to make it a full 6 feet tall. To join the sections together, we line them up very carefully and use a scab to keep them in place. A scab is just another piece of wood fastened to the outside of both pieces. Once we actually install the slip on the trail, it'll include additional supports at this junction to help support the weight of the structure and the people riding on it. Now that we have the pieces joined together, the scale of this lip is really starting to sink in. Back on the trail, we need to do a fair bit of grading to get the approach right. We also need to dig down so the front of the lip meets up with the trail. Because the whole trail is going downhill, we also need to contend with the angle of the lip itself, which requires even more digging. It's a good thing we built the approach last week because this part ended up being a lot more work than we originally anticipated. It also ended up being a lot more complicated. The thing that jumps out at me right off the bat is just that I feel like the whole lip needs to shift like completely to the right, two feet to the right. And then that tree is just the original flag line of the trail put its path right between the garage and a bunch of trees in the woods. I tried to get everything as straight as possible without cutting down any live trees. Now we're left with a deceptively narrow margin to get the lip angled right. We need to make our measurements, dig down, and then hope everything remains in the same spot when we drop the lip in place. Here to help us with the final stages is Joe. He's a longtime friend of Eric's and actually a neighbor of mine. To do this alone or even with two people would be challenging. You need to hold a giant transition in place, measure it, and fasten it all simultaneously. So you either need three people or six really long arms. While Eric and I finish up the construction of the lip, Joe is making some adjustments to the area behind the bushes. This really pushes the boundaries of my no building in the yard policy, but it's technically still in the woods, right? Although it's not ideal, we cut away part of the lip to preserve this large tree root. This could eventually cause a problem with the lip, but the whole point of this project is to hide the lip behind trees and shrubs. So we need to make some compromises. All in all, 
It took about a day and a half to get our materials, settle on a design, grade the approach, and build the lip. Now that it's all done, we get to see if this lip is any good. Yep, I bought an airbag lander. It's not like I kept it a secret though. The trail is, after all, named airbag. But it's possible that some of you didn't know that landing airbags are even a thing. You don't see a lot of wedge-shaped bouncy castles in day-to-day -day life. While the airbag is as awesome as I imagined, our airbag experience didn't start out so smoothly. There was a learning curve. We were also riding our lip for the very first time and trying to gauge speed. Naturally, I did the honors. Seth's about to hit the airbag for the first time. I told him go like a moderate speed because the last thing you want to do is land all the way down at the bottom and bounce to flat or just, you want to be in the, in the main zone. So we'll see if he took my advice. That was pretty bad. Are you okay? This is only the most recent instance of me not listening to Eric. But to be fair, I don't listen to anyone. Yeah, I'm okay. Good thing I wore my full face. Yeah. I'm not sure if you would have been better off to land on your bike or not at that point, but I think you probably made the right call. So how far do you think we ought to move this landing out? I think we just go a little slower. Like you just cruise. Okay, round two. Eventually we got the speed thing worked out and by then it was starting to get dark out. But we had a list of things to work out for the following morning. First, we covered the drainage trench with three quarter inch plywood so the bottom of the landing would sit flat. That was causing a sort of double bounce on day one and the plywood solved it. Once we got that taken care of, we went back to make some adjustments to the lip. Because of the slope the lander was sitting on, it was a fair bit lower than the lip, making it difficult to see when approaching it. We went back and forth, first removing two planks from the top, and then trying it again with only one removed. We kept testing it, making adjustments, and discussing it. I love the way the lip felt yesterday, but yeah, that is a little more reasonable. Just throw the board back on and ride it. Let's put the board back That's on, easy. ride it, and if it feels good, we can chop it off, we can just... Eventually, yep. we settled on making the lip one plank lower than the original plan, and everything felt perfect. That put us at about five and a half feet with a ten and a half foot radius. With the lander about ten feet away, this is actually a really mellow jump that you don't need much speed for. That's kind of what we wanted, since we intend on doing tricks off this thing. But we still had a lot of mistakes to make. At first, we were afraid of running the airbag too firm, since it might actually bounce us off of it upon landing. So to dampen the bounciness, we experimented with the air flaps and got it to where we thought things would run smoothly. At first, things did run smoothly, until they didn't. I guess the flaps must have blown open because the airbag was collapsing so much that Eric's pedals dug into the cover and stopped his bike completely. The same exact thing happened to me. I stopped at the top. <laughs> what do you mean you stopped? Eventually we realized that closing the flaps and running it super firm was actually the way to go. But we sure did learn that the hard way. Among these learning experiences, we did have some big wins. Although I was unable to throw any tricks on day one, Eric and Joe were getting really comfortable. The jumps at Eric's house are designed for dirt jump specific bikes, which are small, simple, and optimal for doing tricks. But with the airbag there to cushion a potential fall, 
Eric took the opportunity to try those same tricks on his full-size Diamondback release. So I put the front brake through the steer tube right here. I modified my star nut. It's a pretty good situation to uh, try it out. I got the flips out of the way. I've always wanted to tail with my trail bike. With the light rain making the airbag increasingly slippery, Eric didn't have much time to keep attempting his tail whip. Yeah! 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 With a rainstorm headed our way, we needed to pack up and call it, but we absolutely crushed our objectives. Now there's a big jump on Berm Peak, and it's totally hidden from view assuming the airbag is packed up. I plan on using this airbag a lot. I never had easy access to a good trick double before. So now I can spend some time and actually learn some tricks. Without Eric and Joe to help out, this wouldn't have come out as good as it did. So thanks to both of you guys for helping me build what is currently the most ridiculous thing on Berm Peak. Check out Eric's YouTube channel to get a behind the scenes look at his trip here. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.